So joining us now um, and talking a little bit about what integrated parenting is for what goes on inside those households, actor, spokesperson for the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, John C. McKinley is here, and alongside of him is Dr. Lawrence Pirro. Welcome back. Welcome, of course, yeah. Doctor. We welcome. Have, welcome. Um, so we're talking about, in this case, an integrated family. First and of all, I asked Dr. Pirro to join me today because I am a, a patient of Dr. Pirro's and also a very dear friend. Who is, I know has, you've leaned on his shoulder yes. as you go through, because it's not an always easy process when going through what you've gone through. No, absolutely, and, and what an integrated family is to me in 2014 is, uh, is when a special needs child, when that variable is introduced into a typical family. And so parenting's gonna have to be a little different when, when, that, when that piece is introduced. So in other words, when I was growing up, we had, uh, there was five of us, we we're all typical kids, which is the politically correct way for saying a normal kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and w my parents didn't have to necessarily n navigate this course uh, of, of an integrated family. And so different steps have to be taken. So in other words, how is it different having a special needs child in a family than just five or three typical kids? Mm -hmm. And one thing is, uh, it, when you decide, how am I gonna parent best for this kid? Uh, I think that the number one thing you have to come up with for the special needs kid is I'm gonna anticipate problems before they arrive. Whereas for the typical kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love them and I'm gonna surround them with warmth and blah, 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 and that's great. But with a special needs child, I think you're better served trying to anticipate. Uh, Max has triggers. My son, Max, who's 16, was born with Down syndrome. If the dogs start barking because someone's at the gate and that triggers him starting to wail on himself, maybe knowing someone's coming over, maybe put the dogs in the garage. Is that a big deal? No. But it might prevent the child from, uh, in other circumstances, when a dog starts to uh, bark and he elopes, which uh -huh. means uh, to, to sprint away, into traffic. You, you're going to want to avoid that. Sure, sure. And so uh, parenting a kid with special needs is a little different than parenting a typical family. And that's what an integrated family is in our case and something that's just endlessly fascinating to me. Tell us about Max, your son Max. How old he is and what, what special needs does he have? Max, who Dr. Pierre knows very well, is a 16-year-old 16 16 -year young man, goes to school in Santa Monica, and he was born with Down syndrome. And uh, he's this very high-functioning, miraculous kid who has challenges that are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And so unless, unless some steps are taken to accommodate those, uh, I, I don't think you're addressing, I don't think you're being the best parent you can be. Well, what steps are you taking? Because I know you have two other children, tip, as you call typical children. How do you integrate these children into your life when your older son is in your home? So in other words, I, I, the best thing that works for us is inclusion and, and inviting people to be part of solving problems with Max. How do you do that? So uh, Max has a sensitive scalp and doesn't like me to brush his hair. As of about six months ago, he lets his sister, Billy Grace, brush his hair. It's the greatest thing in the history of the world. I come in the bathroom, and he's letting Billy Grace take a brush, which is, was, is just tantamount to, to a cringe to Max, and she's brushing his hair. Are you How old is she? Uh, Billy Grace is five. Aww. And so wow. you, you come into the bathroom and you see this, and, and is that the be-all, the end-all? No. But that's certainly a, a step in the right direction. But when you saw that, that must have been, lack of a better word, an aha moment for you as a parent to say, wow, this is how the, your five-year-old can, can, com can communicate. Wait, what's your son's name, by the way? Maxie. Max. Um, uh, to communicate with Maxie. Well, even, even more productively, it stimulated, in my mind, it said, like, well, if you can brush Max's hair, which is verboten because he doesn't like that touch, uh, where, where can we go from here? Can we help with eating? Can we help with uh, hygiene? Can we help with a lot of things that are very challenging for us? It also points, it also points out <clears throat> the fact that you can't imagine how a special needs child is viewing a situation. So for example, John brushing his hair, he may view as a punishment. Because you're the parent, That's interesting. Right? but his little sister, who is smaller than he is, and it's, a, it's not it's not a punishment; it's a different activity. Doctor, how do you counsel someone? You know, like John. I know you're friends and whatnot, but I know at some point you you just probably need to talk and have some, you know, guidance through this. Doctor Pirro is the smartest person I've ever met in my life, and one of the most malleable intellects, um, and and can deliver um, experienced medical information uh, to a civilian mm -hmm. in, a, in a really accessible way. Like what? What, what do you, what did you see him needing the most 
information or area that needed the most information or support in? The absolute number one most important thing is communication. Right. First of all, is you talking to someone like he does to me or whatever yeah. about what you're experiencing and bouncing it off someone. Sometimes your partner in the marriage and sometimes not your partner because one of the issues with the partnership in the marriage is that there's often in this situation some guilt, some remorse and some punishment, right, which is hard. So in certain situations, that's not necessarily your best chatting partner over how do I deal with the situation. What happens if the, that communication breaks down, not with with doctor here, but within your family unit if you're not communicating say with Maxie the way it has to, it it has to well communicating with Max is a challenge because he has verbal he has profound verbal challenges mm -hmm. and so that's where the p parenting has to you have to that's what i mean anticipate triggers that are going to happen you you have to stay ahead of protecting that child in addition to protecting him you have to protect him from himself sometimes mm -hmm. and so uh, I, I think you got to run the extra mile. Uh, I, I've always told people uh, more times than I can tell you that when you're a parent of a child with special needs, whoever you believe in has given you a chance to be an extraordinary parent because you're going to have to be. Yeah. 